Joining us now, the top Republican on the Senate Armed Services Committee, Senator John McCain. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me on. Let us talk about the debate really roiling and raging on Capitol Hill about what the President of the United States is authorized to do over Libya. And earlier this week, you issued a warning, uh, an admonition to your own party. Let's listen to what you said earlier this week. I caution my friends, both here in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, that we don't want to do anything or pass legislation which would encourage Gaddafi to remain in power. And I would say to my Republican friends, if this were a Republican president, would you be trying to impose these same conditions? So that was pretty stark. Were you saying that they're at risk of putting politics over national security and over policy? I think that's a great risk, coupled with war weariness, coupled with the lack of complete success in, or apparent to some success in, in Libya, I, although I believe that Gaddafi is crumbling. Uh, but I think it's a combination of things, and it certainly is also a bit of partisanship. Look, the President of the United States, I believe, should have gone in with our air power and not given it to, quote, NATO, because... Not leading from behind, so Exactly, speak. not leading from behind. But the point is that if we do not continue this effort in Libya, if Gaddafi remains in power, it could have profound consequences. So the War Powers Act, every president has said, uh, that they don't agree with its constitutionality, but they have adhered to it. So the Congress of the United States should pass a resolution, and Senator John Kerry and I have a resolution that's ready to go, uh, that would comply with the War Powers Act. You said that you think Gaddafi is crumbling. We've heard the Europeans say that they might have to continue the bombing to the fall. I've heard American top military officials say the same thing. Are you prepared for it to take that long? I'm prepared, whether our European allies, uh, the seven nations of the 28 that are actually in the fight, have the assets is a legitimate question. We are providing all the logistical support, the intelligence, uh, refueling, uh, literally everything but combat aircraft, including predators. Predators are in the fight, uh, but it's enormous strain on our allies. Are you concerned, though, about the message we're hearing? You've talked about the mm -hmm. partisanship, what's mm -hmm. going on in Congress. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned, for instance, about what Speaker Boehner is saying about this? Well, I was more concerned about what the candidates uh, in New Hampshire the other night uh, said. Uh, this is uh, isolationism. There's always been an isolation strain, uh, isolationist strain in the Republican Party, the Pat Buchanan wing mm -hmm. of our party. But now it seems to have moved uh, <laughs> more center stage, so to speak. Defense Secretary Gates, when he came before the United States Congress, he could not identify a vital national American interest in Libya. We were not attacked. We were not threatened with attack. There was no vital national interest. They are not simple situations. It's a mess. It's just an absolute mess. We have got to have a totally new strategy for the region because we don't today have the kind of intelligence we need to know even what we're doing. If we had not intervened, Gaddafi was at the gates of Benghazi. He said he was going to go house to house to kill everybody. That's a city of 700,000 people. What would we be saying now if we had allowed for that to happen. Well, you were one of the key supporters. And what you're talking about is all the Republicans on the stage of that debate on Monday seeming to waver from what's a traditional Republican position on national security. I wonder what Ronald Reagan would be saying today. What would he be saying today if he'd he heard, be, for instance, Michelle Bachman or Romney? He would be Mitt saying Romney. that's not the Republican Party of the 20th century and now the 21st century. That is not the Republican Party that uh, has been willing to stand up for freedom for people for all over the world, whether it be in Grenada that Ronald Reagan had a quick operation about, or whether it be in our enduring commitment to countering the Soviet Union. So what do you say then to a Michelle Bachman who said that there was no vital interest in Libya? I just strongly disagree with her and others. Uh, the fact is our interests are our values, and our values are that we don't want people needlessly slaughtered by the thousands if we can prevent such 
uh, activity. Second of all, Gaddafi has the blood of 90 Americans on his hands. Uh, he is a person who has been involved in acts of terror against the United States of America, bombing of our embassies, etc. So, Pan Am uh, 103? Pan Am 103. The 90 some Americans that were killed in the blowing up of Pan Am 103, the bombing of the disco in Germany. So, if Gaddafi remains in power, it's clear that you will see him engage in an escalated effort, of course, to harm the United States of America, obviously. So let's turn then, for instance, to Afghanistan, where mm -hmm. quite amazingly, many of the candidates, if not all, were talking about a swift withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, for instance, uh, Mitt Romney was mm -hmm. one of those who said so. And let's listen to what he said at that debate. It's time for us to bring our troops home as soon as we possibly can, consistent with the, the uh, word that comes from our generals that we can hand the country over. I think we've learned some important lessons in, uh, in our experience in Afghanistan. Our troops shouldn't go off and try and fight a war of independence for another nation. Only the Afghanis can win Afghanistan's independence from the Taliban. So there's several questions raised there. Number one, is this a war of independence that the United States is fighting in Afghanistan? I had never heard it described that way. Um, we he talked about the lessons of history. We abandoned Afghanistan once, and we paid a very heavy price for it in the attacks of 9-11. So it, that is an important lesson that we must learn. Second of all, we are succeeding in Afghanistan. We have now gained significant control of the southern part of the country. We now have the challenge in the eastern side. And so we are succeeding. By the way, it reminds me of the summer of 2007 when we were all ready to pull out of Iraq. Mm -hmm. And we had to stay the course and we were able to, the surge was able to succeed. That surge is succeeding again under the same general. I wish that that uh, candidate Romney and all the others would sit down with General Petraeus and understand how this counterinsurgency is working and succeeding and it still has enormous challenges, the Karzai government, the latest problems with Pakistan, but for us to abandon Afghanistan to the tender mercies of the Taliban and radical Islamic extremists, I think would be repeating the mistakes we made before. Another thing that Mitt Romney said was bring them back swiftly in accordance with what the general said, he, he added. But of course, right now that debate is going on. What do you think Congress will support? Will it oppose President Obama if he decides on, let's say, a five to 10,000 mm -hmm. troop withdrawal this summer? I think that, that Congress will support uh, a, quote, modest withdrawal. One of the major reasons for that is because Secretary Gates, who is probably, by all measurement, one of the most respected men in America today, has called repeatedly for a, quote, modest withdrawal. So the president really has Secretary Gates to back him up if he makes that decision. One other pure political point, suppose the surge continues to succeed in the summer of 2012, the president was able then to announce a massive withdrawal. That would be very helpful to the president politically. I always try to help him as much as I can <laughs> I, politically. I can't believe you you're know. giving him this strategic <laughs> advice. Well, but I, I think it's, but it's also, I think, clear that we do need to, to move into the eastern Afghanistan and, and finish this fight with one more season. So just to be clear then, what you're saying is that you would support a, quote, modest withdrawal yes. of five to 10 yes. as, as Secretary Gates troops. has said. Yes, support troops, yes. And you think Congress will give him that backing? They won't oppose him this time? I, I think there's going to be a huge debate about it. I think there's going to be a, a real struggle. But uh, I remember, again, the summer of 2007, there were within one vote of the 60 votes to force withdrawal. And again, I would hope that Ryan Crocker and David Petraeus and General Allen, his successor, uh, would be appearing before Congress. I think they can make a case. <laughs> key to the success of Afghanistan and to America's strategic relationship is obviously Pakistan. And mm -hmm. there's been so much talk about Pakistan in the news this week, including that they arrested the CIA informants who helped the United States kill Osama bin Laden. I mean, what does this say? Is it a chilling effect on the relationship even beyond what already exists? And can it be overcome? I think it's one of the most probably the most frustrating aspect uh, of this whole issue. We have known for years that the ISI had contacts and relations with uh, 
with the Taliban, the Haqqani network in particular. Uh, part of that, by the way, was a result of the fact we abandoned Afghan uh, Pakistan with uh, the so-called Pressler Amendment some years ago. But so it seems to me that to restore our confidence in our relationship with Pakistan, they have to make certain steps. And we have to sort of set up some benchmarks as to what we expect. After all, the United States is investing billions and billions of dollars uh, in Pakistan. And we have, the taxpayers have a right to have a return on that. So I want to, and I think we will, set up some benchmarks for Afghanistan, add the same kind of thing we did with Iraq, and some benchmarks for Pakistan that we really expect them to meet. And it's going to be very difficult, obviously, if the enemy has sanctuary. Do you see any hope in actually getting this relationship back on any kind of decent footing? I do, but part of it has to do with the Pakistanis' belief in the length and depth of our commitment. If they think we're leaving, they have to stay in the, in the neighborhood, and it's the toughest and most dangerous neighborhood. If they think we're willing to see it through with them, I think it's much more likely we'll get their cooperation. Let's move to domestic politics, which obviously right. shapes all of this, including what you called war weariness, but also the weariness of paying the immen immense amount of money that it's costing. ABC poll says somewhere between 45 and 46 percent of those polled say that they're not satisfied with the candidates as yet. Um, are you, and they want somebody else, would you consider yourself satisfied with the slate that's already up there? Are you one of the 46 percent who wants to see somebody else jump in? I, I'm satisfied. I think there may be others who jump in, but I'm satisfied. This is the beginning of a process. Uh, but I'm confident that we will come up with a candidate that will be very competitive with President Obama. Are you ready? Will you endorse somebody? I think it's inappropriate for me to, but I do want to send a message. And that is that we cannot move into an isolationist party. We cannot repeat the lessons of the 1930s when the United States of America stood by while bad things happened in the world. We are the lead nation in the world, and America matters, and we must lead. And sometimes that leadership entails sacrifice, sadly. Senator McCain, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me on.